Lovers, Lady Grave Dancer here again for another video. Um, I'm ugh, my eyeball. If you watched the other video, you know I got something in my eyeball that's just being a pain in my ass. Um, was that bad? Am I gonna get in trouble on YouTube? Can you say ass? I don't know. I'd be in trouble. It's been so long since I've done a video, I feel completely awkward. <laughs> but um, anyways, I'm at the office. If you didn't see the last video I posted, I'm at the office because we are. I'm about an hour away from the class that we're doing tonight. We're doing weekly classes here in Dallas, and they are free. Um, and we're going to be, tonight we're doing um, candle magic, protections, and cleansing. We're going to do all things divination later, and I mean all things from uh, fire scrying to mirror scrying to water scrying to pendulums, cards, um, everything that, that is involved in divination. We're going to have a class on that. And um, we're just going into it. Every week we're going to do something different. So I'm here today and I'm still waiting. I've already cleansed the office. This probably looks a little smoky. I've already cleansed the office and we're here. So I'm like, I'm stapling these papers together. So I might as well, because these are the papers we're giving out. This is um, color and symbolism on candles, which I'm a firm believer. You do what feels right to you. But it's always nice to have a, a jumping off point. Um, I'm gonna say um a lot because I feel so awkward making videos again, y'all. It's weird. So uh, I wanted to do. I, I think I have an ancestor altar video. I think I do. I'm almost pretty sure I do. Or we talked about it in a live or something. But I just wanted to go over um, because I've come across some people who don't have ancestor altars and they feel like they're supposed to have it. And I don't, and there are certain practices where you have to have it. It just comes with the territory. But, you know, just for us general practitioners, I don't feel like it's necessary. Like it's something you have to have because your ancestors are not staying at that altar space. They're just not going to, like, at all. I can't even tell you. My grandma will talk to my in-laws. Um, in oh, my God. They're, they're probably talking about me with my husband because they're supposed to be coming in town soon. Um, we haven't seen them in quite a while. So excuse me for that. My grandmother used to always talk to her son all over the house. She'd be in the kitchen and, and she would just be talking to him. And, you know, sometimes she'd make him a glass of tea, have a glass of coffee. My grandma at their favorite restaurant with her sister would make order her a cup of coffee the way that she liked it. So your ancestors don't stay at the altar. Yes, it's a good place to honor them and have things that represent them. It's amazing, but you don't have to. You, even just the pictures on the wall, and I know not everybody has pictures, but just the pictures on the wall can be enough. Like you can have the whole shebang, the whole altar with everything and build it from here to there up to the wall and everything. And that's great. But if you just, you know, remember them and honor them, set them a place at dinner, you know, and have it as a general plate for everybody, like invite them in for dinner invite them in for a drink you know invite them to your parties that you have into your cookouts and that sort of thing uh oh who's this it's my cousin laura no it's angel are you okay yeah oh are you going to come back to the class yes it's sage i cleanse the office get rid of the negativity i'm just making a video oh you're fine Maybe. You should come back. I think you'll enjoy just to see this is very basic. Yes, you can. Yeah, you don't have to. Okay. All right. I'm trying to get, um, he's, he's my friend, but he's my leasing agent and I'm trying to get him to come back because he's very curious and, but he's very nervous as well. So, okay. Where was I at? Yes, invite them to things, you know what I mean? When I've been out on road trips and things like that and I see something like whenever um, one time me and Junior were going on a road trip not so long ago, I think I talked about it in another video and Honeysuckle came through the car, right? The first thing I did was talk to my great grandmother. I'm like, did you smell that? It's just like what you used to grow in your yard. So like they're around us, like they don't, they're not going to stay at the altar. So like. When you have an altar space, that's great. It really is. It's, it's great. I enjoy having mine. I'm not saying you shouldn't have it. I'm saying you don't have to have there it. Things you can do that is exactly what we do on the altar that you could just do all over your house. It's not, you know, it's not a requirement. Uh, my cousin Laura, 
if I'm not mistaken, at least the last time I was at her house, she had a little setup with just a couple pictures and a candle and a plate that she would put food and stuff on her bar that wasn't no bigger than this. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You don't have to have a, a whole big to do to, um, now again, like I said, there's certain practices that do require you to have an ancestor altar because of how you work and stuff, but I'm not part of those. So I'm just giving you my opinion and what, you know, what we do, how we roll over here. You always do what you feel is best for you. And if you feel like you need an ancestor altar, you have yourself an ancestor altar. I'm just saying that if you can't, because a lot of people can't, and a lot of people don't even have things from family members because they don't know any of their family. And that's okay. That doesn't mean that you can't have an ancestor altar, that you can't work with your ancestors because you can. You don't have to have anything. Respecting and honoring them in any way that you're able to do it is what you is what you need to do and it's what they will appreciate at the end of the day. Have you ever have you ever had like this urge where you're like you're cooking maybe? Uh oh, I'm getting a phone call. I'm gonna have to come back for the second part of this. Okay guys, so I'm a little bummed out here. I was editing the video and there is a piece that apparently didn't record. So I'm just gonna add it from here. Um, what I was adding was that if you ever got that feeling when you're doing something to where you're like, you feel like, like for example, if you're cooking and you cook it the way you always cook it, but then for some reason you just get this little, you know, feeling, oh, I need to add some oregano or I need to add some of this or this or I need to, you know, let it cook this much longer or something. Those are usually the feelings that you're getting from your ancestors. I know for a fact that whenever I get these vibes, it's coming from my grandmother. I know that because she was always like that. Everybody always talked about it. Or if you get this urge to um, do something that you wouldn't normally do and you're getting this nudge, that is your ancestors coming through to try to guide you or answer you or just be there for you. Did you drop your ball? They also are here and they like my dad will play pranks on us like he does pranks on us and so stuff will happen things will get moved from one place to the other and I you know I get the feeling and then I know it's my dad like so there's things that our ancestors will do and you'll feel them there and that is kind of kind of an area what I was talking about that we lost that I lost that footage right there when I was editing but anyways thank you so much for watching and I will see you at the next video and as always blessed be guys